It's 8 o'clock and time for another August update. Police investigating the death of 21-year-old Dorota Shaw have said there's no evidence to connect her boyfriend to the murder. Chief DuPont's statement was delivered in response to speculation from local residents that it was a crime of passion. Miss Shaw's strangled body was found by her mother around 10 p.m. last night in what the chief is calling a puzzling crime. I can't believe people are gossiping already, Poe. It's always the person closest to the victim, isn't it, what they say? But that poor boy. A reminder also that due to the murder, this weekend's Tulip Festival has been postponed. New dates will be announced soon. The weather's getting worse tonight with heavy rain forecast. So if you're heading out, you might want to take a jacket. Or a cap. Or wear the jacket in the cab. That's 8 o'clock with Poe and Monroe. Sam, um, I've got news. Uh, we've done a reading. The Five of Swords? That's the same card as yesterday. Let's hope it's not the Knight of Wands. This doesn't look good. It's fine. This happens all the time. There are 78 cards in a deck. The same ones come up a lot. I get it. But we drew the exact same cards yesterday. What are the odds of putting all three again? One in 474,552. I know. I get asked a lot. Bet's a ten of swords. It's happening again. There's going to be another murder. Then Lexi did her thing, and now we have a name. Ellis Monroe. Sam. I've arrested Lexi. Don't look at me like that, it's not your decision. I considered locking both of them up, her and Bronwyn, but I've settled for Lexi. Those tarot readers have been in and out of my office, all day, asking stupid questions and then denying they've even been here. Locking Lexi up is going to rile Bronwyn. She'll make a mistake and I want you to be there when it happens. So what are you doing in my office again? Lexi stays here until we have what we need. Monroe. Everyone knows her. She's a local radio star here. I always get the shot, Sam. One way or another. You must be Sam. I just got off the phone with Chief DuPont. I can't believe it. First Dorota, now me. We're co-hosts on the radio. Oh, sorry. You know that already. Um, we've been partners for two years now. He's a good friend. Can't we be both, Sam? Pose his radio name. He's actually John Pope. He's on air now, but you can come back at 8.30 if you want to see him. On air? We both were. We broadcast live hourly news reports. It's how we keep our funding. Yes. We were... friends. I hadn't known her for long. Only a few weeks. We met at the gala. 
I was hosting and she was playing the cello, you know? I guess we talked for a little while and then she asked me for a drink after the show. After we'd had a few drinks, she invited me back to her house. I thought we were just gonna chat, watch a movie, that sort of thing. Then she kissed me. I was so shocked. She was so attractive. So, I kissed her back. Oscar, yeah. She was a bit confused. When we started seeing each other, she didn't, she didn't like him touching her anymore. I didn't mind, but she did. So I told her if he wanted to get sexual, then maybe she should try something else. I said some guys like to watch, so tell him it would be sexy if he could look, but he couldn't touch. As far as I know, it worked. The killer was in her wardrobe? What? Well, then it had to be Oscar. He's the only one it could be. That doesn't make any sense. Then she was seeing someone else? No. Someone she knew. Knew she'd be alone? A stalker? It was her mom's. She was saving any case she ever got married. This is just between us, right? We fooled around. I don't have many friends, Sam. Everyone thinks because I'm on the radio, I have tons of friends, so nobody ever approaches me. I get lonely, but Dorota was my friend and I liked making her happy. Poe and Dorota, people I say hi to. I have thousands of followers and subscribers and they keep me feeling warm when I'm down, but they're not friends. I do get the odd stalker, but that isn't something anyone wants. Not very well. He's done a few shoots of me and Poe to promote the show. He's fine. He keeps asking me to pose for him, you know, without any clothes on. I always say no. No. Sorry. I did have a strange dream last night though. I was a Hollywood actress and there were hundreds of magazines and newspapers all piling up on the red carpet and they all had my picture on the front cover. But the red carpet wasn't carpet. It was a pool of blood and it seeped through all the pages. Then I woke up. What do you think that means, Sam? I don't know what. I mean, I'm anxious now. Maybe, maybe it was predicting Dorota's death. Or mine. That sounds reassuring. I hope it's not just words, Sam. You've kind of just asked about Dorota since you got here. Sam, you forgot your phone. Excellent work. Gold star for you. <laughs> oh, hello. This is my goddaughter, Sophia. 
She's only nine and she's a maths genius. Hello. <laughs> I have to pop to my room to get something. Be nice to her while I'm gone. Otherwise I might have to smother you in your sleep. What's your name? I'm Sophia. Pleased to meet you. Do you want to know a secret? Viola was taken by aliens in their ship. She doesn't want anyone to know. Sorry about that. Sophia, your mother will be here for you soon, so run along and wait. <laughs> now, Sam, how can I help you? Of course. Poe and Monroe. She's on the radio. <laughs> Yes, I believe I did. She was here once for something. I don't remember now. She has a wicked imagination for her age. <sighs> Do you think you're sitting here now? Perception is reality, Sam. I needed to confide in someone, so I told Chief Dupont, just Chief Dupont. And now you, apparently. Why are you talking about this again? You understand every time you mention abduction, it opens up a vault of crushing memories that I'd rather stay locked up. No. Not even the moon. <sighs> I don't really want to. About a month ago, the guest house was empty and I was alone in my bedroom. All I could hear was dripping. Cold tap. Drip. 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 And then it began. I could smell iron, a strong metallic smell. Then I could taste it on my tongue. And then weightlessness, like time and space had stopped. That was the first time they took me. It's happened five times, even on clozapine. Get that strange aura, then I'm gone. I tests for epilepsy, amongst other things. But all the scans were normal. No. I have certain flashbacks. It's difficult to explain. I'm stuck in the wall of an enormous room made from these wooden vines, except the vines slowly move and drip with pain. My head is pushed out like I'm a trophy. If I look to my side, there are others, heads, all prisoners, being experimented on. They rearrange us like decorations. They suck us backwards into the darkness and then thrust us back through the wall. And when they return me home, I'm broken. Cuts. Bruises. Memories. Sam, listen to me. I don't care about Dorota or the Travellers or the Devil himself. Talk to the Chief and get Lexi out because I'm not answering any more questions until I know she's okay. How could you let Chief Dupont do that? I'm not talking to you until you get this fixed. Bronwyn was on tarotasm, Sam. 
just like she was an hour ago. And they record everything, so her alibi should be without question. She was just lying to protect Lexi. She's maternal like that. You're only alive because we want you to be. Hello, I'm Rain. What is it, Ray? I have a plan. You do? Enlighten me. Maybe Ellis should stay with us. With our track record. If she gets killed anywhere near us, we'll be sent to jail, whether we did it or not. That's cold. That's... I'm just being practical. Ellis's fate is in our hands. Ours isn't. Who is Sophia? You saw her, did you? She's my goddaughter. At that age where she overshares. <laughs> is she a ghost? What makes you say that, Rain? Is there something about her aura? Haven't you done enough predicting my death? I'm sorry. It's okay. I'm just kidding. I know it's not your fault. Well, unless you're the killer. Have you made a decision about the show? I think it's a no. Sorry. It's just the reading that you gave me the other day. I don't want to scare off the audience. Why would I scare off your listeners? They don't want to hear talk of death and darkness. Well, they do, if it's in a story. But you can't tell them they're going to die. I said you were going to die? You didn't say you're going to die, just like that. But I remember the death card. And the devil. And you said it was... What was the word you used? My challenge. That... I needed to die so I could be free from my chains. I know you said it doesn't mean a literal death, but maybe it does. Hi, I'm Bronwyn. I'm Bronwyn. I hope Lexi gets released soon. What a day! Ellis Munro, then. Looks like our traveller likes redheads. I wouldn't be so sure. Should we be worried about Violet? Maybe she thinks she was abducted by aliens. Then that possibly means she's already been a traveller target. What else did she say? Something about being in a row of heads. So they're killing us for sport. Sounds about right. Do you believe Tara can predict things now?
I'm not one for mystics in crystal balls. I'm a Virgo. <laughs> it says you're lying about your alibi. Well, I suppose it has a 50-50 chance of getting it right. Who are you? What are you doing in my house? Get out now before I call the police! Hi, I... <clears throat> Hi. Hi, I'm Chief DuPont. Chief, what a surprise to see you. Again. Why didn't you tell me... I told you Dorota was first. And that didn't turn out very well, did it? Let's hope Sam does a better job than you did. Chief, I wanted to ask you something. Uh, is it about the boudoir? Am I still a suspect? Yeah. Okay. Good. Listen, I think I might get out of this place soon. I need some space. Uh, is it? Yeah. So it's true then? I haven't seen them. It's all tasteful stuff. But... I'm just in shock. All the time. How, how could she be so different? I just can't process it all. Chief DuPont, thanks for calling in. I'm just At the moment, my heart's beating a thousand times a minute and I can't sit still. Every noise or knock on the door makes me jump out of my skin and I keep looking behind me. Is that safe? Have I ever let you down? What's... That you're just saying you're doing things when you're not actually doing anything. What's the plan, Chief DuPont? How do we stop this from happening? How do we stop me from dying? Hi, I'm Ellis. I'm Ellis. I'm Zach Weston, just sharpening my powers of persuasion. I need to talk about- What have you been doing with Ellis Monroe? What haven't I been doing? You are so irritating. Want to- is that really all you think about? It's starting to look like August has a serial killer targeting redheads. Look at my hair, Zack. 
Does this look red to you? Zach, let me stop you there. Um, you are one creepy fellow. Now, I, I don't know what you had going on with the rotor, but I don't want anything to do with it. Do not come back here, please. Zack, what are you doing here? I've been a naughty boy. I need to... Good to know. I'm not one of them though, so... Unless there's anything else? Pose. Let's pose for me. Zack, please stop asking. It's not gonna happen. Just, uh... Are you bullying me into taking my clothes off for you? That's sleazy. Just leave, Zach, before I call Chief DuPont. I'm Oscar. Is there anything else I can do? Oscar, good. You got my message. Got some things to show you. What have you got? Does, um, this mean anything to you? That's true. And what if I showed you this? Alice Monroe. Do you know her? She's from the radio. And if I do this? No. Anything? What are you doing? That'll be all. You can go now. Oscar, I'm so sorry. What can I do? Have you seen the Oscar... It's so much more complicated than that. Why didn't you save her? Is it really- Oscar, I didn't mean to hurt anyone. That's not who I am. I go out of my way to help people, to be kind to them. So were you helping or being kind? I had feelings for her, Oscar. You should understand that. I'm sorry this is how you had to hear it. But maybe she didn't tell you because she was leaving me. I don't know. I'm sorry, I truly am. I forgive you. That's so kind of you. Giving me closure. I have so many loose ends. And not much time. Sam, do me a favour, go easy on Violet. If we need to get anything out of her, let me deal with it. She'll open up to me. What do you know about it? Yeah, I, I pulled in a few bug-eyed aliens, but I wouldn't confess. I've got a murder to solve. Can we talk about this later? Why? Well then, I've made a mistake. Whoops! 
A few hours in the cell works magic on most people, even tarot readers. Look, I see you're starting to care for these people already, but Violet's been watching them like a hawk. If you can convince her, you convince me. And you're sure it was her? Then it couldn't be her, could it? You want me to tell Claude, don't you? Sorry, I mean Chief Dupont. Fine, fine, I'll call him. Fine. Let me do the paperwork. I'm starting to regret hiring you. Maybe you should concentrate on something else. Sam, thanks for breaking me out. You're my hero. I want to do something for you in return. Tell me what I can do to help. Yes, please use me. Tell me what to do. You got it. Me and the spirit world are going to have a serious chat. I'll get back to you when I find something. I've heard on the radio, but other than that, I don't know anything about her. I want to help them. That's the million dollar question, isn't it? Although we can be sure of one thing. Yeah, she sounded blonde on the radio, but Mercury called her as a redhead. A little bit. What did you want to know? A right can take many forms, but from what we know about these travellers, it seems to be performing some kind of coming-of-age ceremony. Yes, a rite of passage. A running havoc in our dimension is rewarded in theirs. Not fair, is it? Three is a powerful number. There's a divine balance to it in our universe anyway. But maybe it doesn't mean anything where the traveller is from. Maybe three is just the carry-on limit for interdimensional travel. Was it a gold coin? Hmm. That's more of a serial killer thing than a possessed by traveller thing. It's a bit showy, but well, there's no guarantees. No. I can do a reading if you want. Nine of Cups. This is a very positive card. Is Zach a suspect? Something feels wrong. He's too smug, too self-congratulating, like he's got away with something. I don't like this, Sam. I don't like this one bit at all. Yes, of course, anything. Why Violet? Do you think she's in danger? You don't think she's involved, do you? Leave it with me, I'll see what I can find out. And don't worry, 
I'll be super discreet. Yes, I met her at the radio station. I was offering my services. Earning a living is tricky when you travel around as much as we do. And last time I checked, Violet wasn't offering us room and board for free. Yeah, she asked for a sample reading to show what I could do. <laughs> it's easy to see now, with the benefit of hindsight. Three of Swords, the Devil, Death. I mean, any tarot reader will tell you that death hardly ever means real physical death. But given what we've learned... In Birmingham, it was a man called Yuri Harris. He worked as a butcher. He beheaded all three girls within hours of each other. And we couldn't stop it. He pleaded not guilty for reason of temporary insanity. The Butcher of Birmingham received three life sentences and won't be seeing the light of day anytime soon. We know it wasn't him, though. We know it was a traveller. So what's the news about Ellis? I feel so useless sitting here. I want to help. Hi, I'm Lexi. Oh, um, <clears throat> I'm Lexi. Lexi Corn, how thin are these walls? What do you mean the walls are th I can hear you screaming at your Ouija board. Last night too. I feel like I've heard your whole life story. What it does Sam like me? Is Violet a lesbian? Will Ellis die? Will Brom one die? That last one, don't worry about that. What? Why not? Ach, I. I am Bronwyn MacLeod from the Clan MacLeod and I am immortal. You silly badger. Our job is so... Tell me about it. Chasing around the unknown, trying to triumph good over evil. Generally standing around helpless watching people die. Why do we do it? For me? It's a common decency thing. Hi, I'm Bronwyn. Did you know the Earth was overrun by trans-dimensional evil? Want to help fix it? Sure. Trans-dimensional evil? I'll read the manual, Lex. People are afraid of ghosts, zombies, and aliens. They never even think to consider the possibility that there are millions of universes, potentially with millions of predators, all far more evolved than we are. What are our chances of victory? Minuscule. But if we don't fight at all, zero. Sorry, we're closed. Unless you're here for something else. I'm a friend of Dorota's. Dorota? I'm sorry about what happened. Dorota told me things about you. Things? That's ominously vague. I'm not sure what you mean. Sorry, I didn't catch your name. Lexi. Lexi? I like it. It's got an edge. Dorota says she knew you. You're dating Violet, aren't you? Dorota says she knew you. You're dating... You're dating... No, we're just friends. That's not what you told Sam. <laughs> Violet doesn't always see things clearly. It's fine. I know how to handle her. Doesn't see what clearly? What do you mean? 
you know, some women, they think a bunch of flowers means a relationship. Anyway, <laughs> why are we talking about Violet? Let's talk about you. I know what you did to Dorota. Dorota said... Yeah, she had a portrait session with me. Can I get you a drink? No, thanks. Sure. Here, I've only got vodka. You're old enough to drink, right? Of course. Does it matter? I like you already. I know what you did to Dorota. I didn't do anything to Dorota. You killed her. You said- You make it sound so sordid. Dorota didn't do anything she didn't want to. It's nine o'clock and you're listening to Radio August. Investigations into the murder of 21-year-old Dorota Shaw are continuing this evening. Miss Shaw was found dead in her home at approximately 10 p.m. last night in what police are describing as a puzzling case. Residents are urged to be cautious until the perpetrator is caught. I cannot stress this enough, August. Stay safe out there. You mean the world to me. In other news, Monroe has been detained on urgent business, so you're stuck with me until she returns. Never fear, Monroe fans. We still have lots of pre-recordings, so you can relax with her angelic tones. That's nine o'clock with Poe and Monroe.